Hi, and welcome to the show. My guests today are the dynamic founder of the organization Peace One Day and its high profile ambassador. Both have an amazing passion for bringing peace to the world and using their fame to make a difference. Both have acting in their blood and are also great friends. Jeremy Gilly and Jude Law, welcome to The Scoop. Thank Hello. you both for coming. Pleasure I to be really, here. I really, really appreciate it. Jeremy, start with you. <coughs> Professional actor for over a decade. What made you move to documentary making and specifically the Peace One Day documentary? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I read a, a, a book um, that talked about the responsibility of media. And I thought to myself, well, you know, that's my field. I'm an actor. So maybe I can use the camera in a positive, constructive way. And I was concerned about what was going on in the world. Um, I was frightened by the violence that's going on in our homes, communities, uh, schools, and between countries. And so I thought, OK, I'm going to make a film about peace. And then when I was going through that process, I realized there was no day of peace. There was nothing that united the world. There was no moment of global unity. There was no moment of intercultural cooperation separate from politics and religion. And that fascinated me. And that was when I had the idea, could I make a film about trying to create the first ever day of peace with a fixed calendar date voted by every member state of the United Nations and established Why that do day? you think there wasn't a day of peace before? Well, actually, funnily enough, there was, but it didn't have a fixed calendar date, and that's mm -hmm. why nobody knew about it. So our job was to make that day have a fixed calendar date, but more importantly, call it a day of ceasefire and nonviolence, a day that actually asks people in our homes, communities, and schools, and between countries to stop fighting. And of course, that documentary was called Peace One Day. You're welcome to, to show it on your channels. And, and it, was, it was a great journey. Challenges in, in making and funding the film? In, in yeah, massive challenges. I mean, you know, I knew Was it self-funded initially? Yeah, I mean, it basically it was me and my friends. We would hold nights of uh, poetry or, uh, you know, we would beg, borrow and steal. British Airways were giving us all our flights. Kodak were giving the stock. Panavision were giving the cameras. And it, go, went, it went on and on and on. So, you know, th this process has really become a reality because of the goodwill of absolutely thousands of people. We're here today because, in, you know, everybody has been supporting, you know, this journey to one, establish a day of peace and then see lives saved in Afghanistan and now of course as you know you know 1.5 billion people probably being aware this year. Jude is one of the world's most successful actors. Um, what made you join up with Jeremy on the Peace One? Did you know each other before? Yeah we did. We knew each other, um, we've known each other 20 odd years. Uh, we met through um, mutual friends. I became aware of his uh, filmmaking and specifically aware of this um, uh, adventure, crusade, whatever you want to call it, that he was on. Uh, and once the day had been created, um, along with many other people, I wanted to know how I could help. And uh, it's actually documented in one of, one of his, uh, in the, his second film, but we, I went along to do some uh, uh, um, clips, sound bites, awareness uh, uh, videos for his website, and was simply asking where he was going next. And he had just decided that Having created the day, he wanted to see whether the day worked. And um, the conflict in Af Afghanistan at the time, it was about 2006 this was, was at its height. And there was a, an opportunity to take the program, the, op the, the um, organization, to Afghanistan and try to inspire a day of ceasefire there in order to encourage an inoculation program. And I happened to be free and I said, I showed some interest in going. And off we went. This was I mean, 2007. It's not, it's not, I mean, you must be really good friends. I mean, Afghanistan is not a place you kind of, on a whim, decide, yeah. well, I'm going to go to Afghanistan. Well, yeah, good friends, but also I was, you know, like so many people are when they engage in this organization, and indeed with Jeremy, I was inspired. I was moved by it, and it seemed to me if it was safe enough for him, it was safe enough for me. And I like the idea of using film, which is obviously a world I'm, I'm involved in, in a different way, using it as a positive medium to um, educate, to document something life-changing. And the uh, time we spent there had an incredible effect. Um, we managed to, um, I think, reach out and, and really inspire a lot of the different um, um, warring factions in the country. Uh, a huge inoculation program took place because of that trip. It happened again the next year. Jeremy. Um, very nicely asked me to come on board as ambassador and it's been the most positive thing in my life really for the last seven years. Both of you have a lot of pressures on your time. I'm sure Jude, you support a lot of other causes as well um, across the continent. What keeps you, you in particular, coming back to Africa? Because you have had other projects here in the past and mm -hmm. have supported other causes. What's the time when the first time you came to Africa, what was that like and why did you have this, did you have this love for the continent immediately? 
I like, I like things that remind me uh, 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 that I'm alive. And I, th I feel very alive in Africa and the countries I visited in Africa. Um, there's an there's a incredible uh, beauty here. There's an incredible sense of um, uh, reality here. Um, and there's obviously, you know, there's a harshness, there's a brutality, but there's also a great sense amidst that of hope. And it's why I think it's so exciting that we're finally doing I mean, alongside all the events that we've been doing for many years, a concert in an African nation, um, because it sort of embodies all those things that I've just mentioned. It embodies, you know, the reason we're here, the reason we're trying to create something positive and hopeful is because of the, um, you know, the, the, the dramas and the tragedies of the past. But we're trying also to shine a positive light on a country to, to, to demonstrate to the world that there's so much more to this nation, so much more to this continent than just what you might read in the paper about the, the, the horrors. Um, but every time I've been here, I've always left feeling uh, more humane, more human, and more in touch with who and what I want to be. Jeremy, your first time on the continent? Uh, I, you know, I think I've been to 27 African countries now. Um, you know, I've spent the last 16 years, uh, you know, much of my time mm. on this continent. And, um, I and think what got you? Well, I mean, Africa? I listen, I mean, it began, I mean, obviously I've been to African countries, but, you know, when I was in Somalia, um, right at the very beginning in 2000, I mean, we launched in September 1999. And in the beginning of 2000, I was in Somalia and I spent some good time there. And, and I saw some things that I never, and smelt some things that I just never knew existed and it shocked me uh, to the absolute core of me and it made me never want to give up on trying to do anything that I could which might make a difference even the smallest difference and uh, you know Africa gave me that gift and uh, and I love it for that and I love coming back and I have to say, actually, that in Africa over the years, we've seen things go on in every single country of Africa. Um, and the African Union, you know, have been instrumental for many, many years and pushed it very hard. You know, meeting figures like Mandela when I did in the early days. I mean, this is an amazing continent. It has so much to offer the world. And right now on Peace Day, it is leading the world on the only day of peace that exists. Goma DRC is leading a global celebration. That's a great story. We'll be right back with Jeremy Gilley and Jude Law talking about the power of media in Africa. Stay with me. Hi and welcome back. I'm here with Jeremy Gilley and Jude Law. We were just talking about, you mentioned earlier, Jude, about the, the image of Africa. Jeremy, you talked about using the power of media in order to get the message out for peace one day. The media is often has not often been kind to people in the public eye. Both of you have experienced that yourself. What are your thoughts on media in Africa and what kind of an impact it can have on changing the image of the continent? We're still seeing, um, you know, my father filmed the 1984 famine and it was his pictures that, that, that triggered that, you know, probably the largest single act of giving ever. Mm. But Ethiopia is still seen by many as a country of famine, mm. um, especially for those that have never been there yet. It's one of the fastest growing economies in the world. So what can African media do to change it? We can't rely on the West anymore. To me, there's a really simple mistake that is made. And it, and it, and it, it, it applies to several things. People around the world, but let's talk specifically about Africa, are, are always doing positive things in their lives, to stay alive, to uh, uh, give hope to each other, to you know, uh, love one another, to care for one another. And obviously at the same time, all around the world, and in Africa in particular, they're also doing awful things to each other. But we know that the world media tend to concentrate on all the atrocities, the terrible things, and not the positive. Now, what we do, we haven't yet seen, unfortunately, an absolute eradication of all the awful things. That's why we're still striving for one day of peace. But what we hope to do is to encourage the media, and we need the media to do this, to shine a light, even if it is just for this one day, on the positive, to say, look, amidst all this awful stuff that we know about, that we read about every day, look how people can also behave, look how people can also treat each other, look how people can also celebrate something that we all know we need 
otherwise why bother, which is a hope for a peaceful future, a hope for a peaceful childhood for someone. So what would be great is if the African media could do something that the Western media doesn't do an awful lot, which is embrace the positivity. You know, we're not saying, oh, there will be no violence on this day. We're saying there'll be a massive reduction, and that's really, really good. And let's record that, and let's tell the world about it. Because like you say, you know, you live in, I don't know, North America, you live in Europe somewhere. A lot of what you read about Africa is about, oh, this atrocity, this genocide. Yeah, it's this famines, wars, HIV, that's I all. I come here and I've here. seen nothing but, you know, fantastic things too. I mean, th there's a balance. But you could say the same about, you know, the London where I live. I see awful things, I see wonderful things. It depends on where and what you want to shine your light on. But not many African journalists come and cover stories in England or in the US. And no. this is, again, part of the problem is that we don't have that global presence. Yeah. Um, uh, that, that we should do. Jeremy, from your side, in terms of media on the continent, you've 27 countries you've been to, you've seen the atrocities committed. So as media, we're not saying that there is all good in this continent. There's a lot of bad here. How do we balance that story out? You balance that story out by making a joint choice to balance it out. And it's as simple as that, isn't it? And I think that, you know, on a personal level, I can't speak for the media of the world or the media of Africa, but on a personal level, you know, I chose to use the camera in a way that was constructive and that I hoped would inspire people. But I also wanted it to engage and most importantly, kind of entertain and uh, tell stories that people wanted to watch. Now, that's a, that's a tricky thing to do, actually. Um, and I'm delighted that over the years, uh, with the support of the BBC and the support of Jude and our good producer friends, you know, we've been able to create um, uh, movies that have sold all over the world. So I think it's a choice. You have a choice uh, to, to, in your everyday life and in the work that you do um, to, to use that energy in a constructive, positive way. And you've, every event you've had, you've had music. You've had a concert. Why is music such an important factor with Peace One Day. Why did you choose music as opposed to art or, or you know, a, a, a conference or a debate with world leaders? Why music? Celebration. Yep. I think that, um, you know, music, uh, it's, well, just music has a, is an incredible way of shining a light on the successes of Peace Day and the things that people are doing. Um, you know, I mean, really early on, you know, it was, it was very apparent to me that getting the message out of the extraordinary activities that were being, that were taking place on the Day of Peace needed to be known by people because, of course, that's, that's what inspires us to become involved ourselves. And, you know, obviously your father ignited uh, one of the greatest concerts and, and songs of all time. And I, I'm a part of that. I grew up with that. I was actually at Live Aid in Wembley uh, and watched that concert. And, uh, and so I think we all know that it's a great vehicle and, and we use it as one of the mechanisms to raise awareness of the Day of Peace. But what, you know, what we see at our concerts is the concerts are also there to call people to action and to very much uh, illustrate uh, the thousands of activities that are going on on the day. It's a lighthouse and it shines an enormous light that can be seen by many, many people. Uh, it's a great vehicle. Jude, any personal thoughts on music from your side? No, just that, you know, music is, a, music is a, often a direct um, route to people's emotions, to people's hearts. And alongside mm. all the um, activities that go on around the world, it's just lovely that the organisation also has a, a focus every year uh, of celebration, that it is a party also celebrating this day and the achievements of the day and the attitude and energy of peace. Um, you mentioned art. I mean, what's been interesting is in the time that I've been involved, the seven years, yes, we have concerts. They, they tend to move around the world. Sometimes we have two, three, four going on at the same time. Obviously, this year we're, um, we've been in um, the DRC. But we also have, you know, um, art um, campaigns, too, where we involve um, artists from around the world to uh, make pieces um, that are inspired by, are on the themes of peace, usually involving decommissioned weaponry. Um, and we've seen some wonderful work in that field too. So the effects and the, the ways in which we celebrate and mark the day are also you know, spreading and broadening. We'll be right back with Jeremy and Jude. Stay with us. Hi, welcome back. We're here with Jeremy and Jude Law. And we were talking about peace and the importance of peace um, and, and, and peace one day. Going back to the youth, um, 
We've seen massive movements of young people. The Arab Spring was a very good example, but again, the chaos that that caused, it's not always, the youth doesn't always have the answer in terms of going forward. Um, you know, the, Egypt is in, in probably worse state than it was before the Arab Spring. Libya is, is, is in a worse state. Now you've got wars coming out and um, or conflict coming out in, in the Ukraine and, uh, and other parts of the world. Does this put a downer on, on the work that you guys are doing with, with Peace One Day? No, I think it makes Would it more exciting. More, more no, no, I think it, I think it makes it more, you know, that's, 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 the, that's the very fuel. I mean, the mountain climber who climbs the mountain, you know, when it's tough and you fall down because there's a lip you can't get past, you don't go, well, hey, I'm never going to climb that again. That's exactly why you want to climb the next day. You know, we, you know, those are the challenges. That's what life's about. You know, failure is everything. You know, failure is when we learn most about ourselves and each other. And that is the, the fuel and the ignition to us climbing and believing that we can get to the top. We have to believe. That's why the mountain climber ultimately gets to the top, because they believe and they never give up and they'll always try to get past that hurdle that is seemingly impossible. That's, that's, that's the fuel. And that's what young people need to know, that your failures are in fact your successes. And actually when somebody says no, it's when it becomes most interesting. And I think that Peace One Day education materials are very much about that. Your failures are when you enrich yourself. So never give up on the idea of making peace a reality because if you give up, it will never happen. I think also you've got to remember we live in a world which is speeding up. We're used to everything being quick now, answers, responses, information. But mankind takes time, change takes time. So, you know, if things don't happen immediately, if someone doesn't change immediately, if you don't see effect immediately, don't give up. It doesn't mean that you've got to get a faster, you know, connection. It means you've got to be patient. And patience is something we're all losing touch with because we live in a world that wants, it's like this, it's too fast. And this is a great area to learn our patience and to take time and remember that, you know, I mean, you're right, there were incredible youth-led uh, uh, um, shifts and changes around the world in the last five years. I mean, I still think the world's better for them. Are they resolved? No, they're not. Will they be resolved in the next 20, 30 years? Probably. And they wouldn't have started without the Arab Spring or whatever it may have been. Um, but it takes time. Things do not happen overnight. How do you, how would Africans learn from the success of people like yourself? I mean, how would they, what are the lessons that you would like young Africans to look at from your lives and say, you know, one, you can do and achieve anything you want. Peace One Day was something, Jeremy, that you, it took you a long time to get to where you are now. And you never gave up, it's simple as that. Is that the lesson for young Africans? I would never assume the role to be able to tell anyone <laughs> what to do other than be yourself, be true yeah. to yourself, m you know, be civil to others and treat others as they w you would have them treat you. That's all I would ever say. Yeah, I mean, one of the, the, the greatest inspirational figures of our lifetimes, of course, is Africa, Mandela. And, uh, you know, so, you know, this continent's inspired the entire world and its individuals. And so, you know, I think that we, we, we must all look at these examples. Uh, we see it in our daily lives. We see it with our families. We see those we love make great strides. We see our children do extraordinary things that give us a total, you know, love of life. You know, and I think, I think it's all around us, you know. And, uh, you know, I think we've, uh, we've just got to see it. We've got to see the positivity and those wonderful things that occur. And that's what it's all about. You know, we can see it differently. We don't need to see what we're shown. Mm. We can choose our own window to look through. Favorite places for you guys in Africa? Guys, Since we're talking about positive things, what are your favorite, favorite mm. spots? Well, I've had, the, I've had the opportunity to uh, go all over the DRC and, you know, it really is just one of the most breathtaking, incredible, resourceful, inspiring countries that I've ever been in. But there's so many parts of Africa when I think about going yeah. deep down south into southern Sudan or, you know, parts of Kenya and, you know, Somalia and South Africa on the beach. I mean, you know, Africa has it. Africa has it. And, you know, I really hope that, uh, you know, it uh, you know, continues to make you know, incredible changes. I mean, some of the countries and, 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 and the achievements that have happened that are not being discussed are really incredible. Of 
course there are issues. Nobody's ignoring them. But uh, the continent's beautiful and its people are amazing. And I love being here. I mean, love being here. Two favorite places for you? Well, every, every, every one of the countries I've been to, I have a favorite place. I don't feel like I know DRC well enough to, um, to mention one yet. I'm just very excited to explore it and get to know it better in the next three years coming back. Very excited about that. I had the most extraordinary journey from uh, Rwanda through to, through to here, and that was a new gem and a new inspiring uh, experience here. I've had great times in Kenya um, and on the coast there. I've had great times in Tanzania, like you were saying. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a continent rich with experience and yeah. wonder. Um, and every time I come, I think I said before, I leave feeling more human and more, my senses are on fire when I come here. You know, you feel like you're hearing, smelling, seeing more than you usually get to see. Um, it's, it's a continent of riches. The future, what's next? Both of you have achieved incredible things in your lives. What's next for, Jude, let's start with you. What's next for you in terms of a next great adventure? Um, well, my adventure with this fella and the organization is, is coming back to the DRC and broadening the, uh, the, the bedrock, if you like, that we've put into place this year and achieving something bigger and better and brighter next year. Um, and purse, we've got a film to edit, which is um, going to be uh, about the, how all of this came together. And then I'm doing a film in London um, with Colin Firth. So I fly back there and start filming in a couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm totally focused. Uh, what next for me? Uh, completely focused, and, and don't want to look at any other the, the, any other mountain to climb apart from uh, the one that we are doing in the Great Lakes region of Africa, uh, and this year really uh, bedding in to the region through everything that we've done on the 21st September on in the DRC. Uh, so that's my focus. Um, the ultimate target is to make sure that three billion people are aware of this day in 2016 to see incredible awareness through the Great Lakes region of Africa and a lot of action. And uh, you know, that's that's the challenge. That's the target. It's really clear that the organization is very focused and you know I hope that we'll do a really great job and certainly if you'd have told me when we began this campaign that uh, in, in Peace Day 2014 these would have been the results that we achieved I would have thought well if we achieve that in, at the end of three years I'd be pleased yeah. so we're in great shape the foundation the Buffer Foundation is very happy and uh, yeah so that, that that's the focus the Great Lakes region of Africa is the focus you know I want to be a great dad I want to be able to teach my little daughter something that will, you know, guide her and give her some direction that will help her to make sense of this world and enjoy it. Jude, could you say it any better? No. <laughs> Not at all. Gentlemen, the show's called The Scoop. I know it's really hard for public figures like yourselves to give me something. But I thought I just gave you one. <laughs> not at all was not a scoop. Tell film I was about to do. Colin Not at all was not a scoop. The film. A bigger film, scoop than that. Uh, the film. The <laughs> film we can always Google. Yeah, Google's a wonderful uh, thing. Yeah. Something that Google doesn't oh, tell us about Jude Law, about Jeremy Gilly. Something um, that you can share with us about your life, about things you've seen or heard or people you've met. <laughs> uh, come on. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's very difficult, isn't it? I mean, I think that, you know, I think for me, you know, in terms of, you know, talking about things that are very personal, I think, you know, it really, you know, ultimately comes down to love and it comes down to my daughter. And I think the scoop is that, you know, for me and my life, it has meaning in, you know, because of her. And, and I think that's it, you know. Uh, that's the scoop, man, that the passion and the drive is based on a little human being that I love dearly. Jude, final word? He keeps, he keeps besting me <laughs> all the answers. It's really hard to follow, isn't it? I, need, I should have gone first. You should have gone first. I did offer it to you first. I'm going to have to think of eye. something really um, <laughs> mundane and small now, because I can't talk that. Uh, right, I, I, can't, I can't think of anything. I live a, I live a very, um, very, very simple life. I think, what, what, a scoop. Um, I really like, play golf. Do you? I mean, yeah. Do I like? I don't play golf. No. I, I mean, I like. Funnily enough, he was talking about mountains. I love climbing. I love climbing, and actually, I climb with a mutual friend of ours, um, who sadly hasn't been able to come with us on this trip. Mm. But um, he's absolutely right about what he said about climbing. If you give up every time you slip or fall or can't make a reach or whatever it might be, uh, you will never get to the top. And that's why I keep climbing. Also, it's the only place 
I can never go where I don't think about anything else because all you can think about is ooh, your next move. Thank Sweet. you both. And that's The Scoop with Jeremy Gilly and Jude Law. Join me again next week when we'll be talking to some more great personalities. From me and the entire team of The Scoop, from Goma, Democratic Republic of Congo, thanks for watching. Great. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Jeremy, thank you What's so up, man? much, man. Oh, thank dude. You. Really appreciate it. Oh, loving it. Well, thank you. Thank you. Seriously, thank you. Thank you.